Now, welcome back. It's still the newspaper review right here on High Impact Television. We've taken a look at what's happening on the front page of the Punch newspaper. But currently, we're being joined by Victor Ohai. Victor Ohai is uh, a presidential hopeful who is aspiring for the presidential ticket on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. He joins us this morning via phone call. Good morning, Victor Ohai, and welcome to the newspaper review. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's let's go straight into business. Victor Ohai, you contested for presidency. You contested for the presidential post some time ago still. Uh, on that particular time, you your political party was not on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, neither was it on the APC. But uh, currently now, you are also vying for the, plat the, the presidency come 2023 on the platform of the PDP. Why the change? Well, it's simple. Um, first of all, it was a smaller party the first time, and then INEC, with his own wisdom, decided to just uh, proscribe those parties and never give them a chance to grow. So there was no alternative. But beyond that, um, it is very obvious that with the spread and with the um, uh, with the spread generally, if you truly want to win then it's better to be in a platform that really has um, uh, structures in every nook and cranny of the country. If, even if you win, if you don't have people to defend your votes, then obviously it's just a waste of time. Okay. All right, let's now, within the sphere of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, the issue about zoning seemed to be the debate currently at the party, and it seemed to be dividing the party into different factions and rivals. Uh, do you go with the zoning principle? Um, well, first of all, the reason anybody will talk about zoning at all is because of the perceived uh, inequity and uh, injustice in the system, where you find a situation where you have someone in government and there's an equitable distribution of resources, there is no discrimination based on where you come from or do not come from. Everyone will feel the same, will have a sense of belonging. Then it wouldn't matter where you, where you're coming from. I mean, when Obasanjo was there, it didn't matter to the northerners or to the easterners or to the uh, southwestern persons or south south people who was in government they just had the president in government you know but in a situation where you begin to see obvious marginalization of one section probably in favor of another then you know people begin to then want to come up for power because they see them as the only way to be able to um, get something for their people and uh, so in the light of that, I would say all, the best would normally be put the best candidate there, a tribalized person. But right now, uh, with what has happened and the way the Southeast is feeling and some other parts of the country, that's the reason for the clamor, and I, I cannot blame them. It's, it's the system that has thrown up the demands, and um, so that's why we're the people are already responding to how the system has treated them. Okay, but currently now, your political party, PDP, uh, there seems to be a lot of infighting. Uh, Aminu Tamwal is expressing interest as well for the presidency. The former president of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, is also expressing interest. And uh, some other northerners, and we, yes, some Wike from River State is expressing interest. Peter Obi from the Southeast is ex expressing interest. You, your honorable self, is also from the southeastern part of the country. You're expressing interest, including other. South, South, actually. Yeah. You, you are south, from the South, 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 South as a bigger part. My mother is from Southeast. Okay. You're, you're equally expressing interest. It doesn't look like uh, the party is together. No. Here's what I would say to you, and that's what it has come down to finally. Uh, um, it's not going to depend on how well you're able to uh, uh, talk to your friends across the divide. Whoever is going to be president of Nigeria has to be someone that is acceptable across every part of this country. I can tell you that the North alone by itself cannot successfully win uh, the presidency without the cooperation of the South, as was demonstrated in, the, in Buhari's uh, first and second term, you know? 
So, and neither can the Southwest alone, you know. I mean, whether uh, make it by itself or even stop anyone. I was uh, when Australia General Robertson just time when the Southwest abandoned him, but, uh, you know, the other parts of the country voted for him. So, whoever is going to be president has to cut across. It doesn't matter whether the North is insisting. If you are a leader that is charismatic enough, that has is that has friends across and you're able to win people across the divide. It wouldn't matter where you come from. Abiola did not need to come from the north when he won the election. So at the end of the day, it's going to depend on uh, uh, the person himself and perhaps Nigerians to choose whoever they think is the best candidate. That's what it has all come down to. Uh, Zoni gives a sense of entitlement. I'm not against it necessarily, but it gives a sense of entitlement. And when you remember that you have only one life to live, and you may be carrying destiny, why do you have to wait because anybody is talking about uh, Zoni? You know? But again, like I said, I'm not against it. But the way it is right now, I can tell you that Zoni has, even though he's entrenched in uh, the constitution of, at least I know, for that of the PDP, but you know, right now, it has been thrown to the dogs. Anybody, whoever wins, whoever emerges, you know, emerges. Unfortunately, that's where it is. Okay. So my advice would be, for instance, if you're from the southeast, don't have a sense of entitlement, go out there, make friends across the divide, and uh, if you're acceptable, it shouldn't be difficult. You know, the most important thing is winning the primaries. If you win the primaries, your party will, will stand behind you. That's okay. what matters the most. All right. Now, yeah. earlier, the All Progressives Congress uh, intended to zone the presidential ticket to the southern part of the country. But because they felt uh, your party now, the PDP, seemed to be uh, tilting towards uh, zoning it to the north or throwing it open uh, so that uh, maybe a northern president can emerge due to their own calculation because they feel that's the only way they can withstand the all-progressive Congress incumbent government. It looks like both uh, currently the, the APC is equally contemplating zoning it to the north because of what your party, PDP, is doing. So is it possible that we have uh, both parties with the tendency to produce a northern candidate? Well, um, I can tell you this. It's not like I would say a northern candidate, but what happen at the end of the day is the strongest man will win. Um, you know, Politics, right? like anything, like business and war, is uh, is a game of strategy. And if you if in doing strategy, you must you must count your environment. You must know what your opponent is thinking about. You must understand your own strengths and weaknesses, and see the opportunities and threats, and weigh them against those of your opponents, and then find where you have competitive advantage. And then that's what will put you ahead. So um, in this case. Um, they are waiting is strategic. They want to see which way it's going so that they can put, uh, they, will, they will be able to see who can match the candidate that PDP is bringing forward. Unfortunately, I think PDP made a mistake by, it's like in a game of negotiation, whoever, whoever uh, names the prize mm -hmm. first loses. Because okay, Mr. Victor, sorry, let me butt in here again. Uh, yes. Yes, let me, let me butt in here before we we'll, we'll go to our next topic. Now, will it be fair if the North, if the PDP and the APC produces the, a Northern candidate, will it be fair and will it be acceptable to the South? It's a tough one. I've talked about the issue of inequity. Mm. People will not think it is fair because they have been marginalized by the... If, and there's no gain saying the fact, current administration, there have been accusations of nepotism you know, so people would feel uh, a sense of injustice, you know, which is the reason why people are clamoring for, uh, you know, zoning it to sections of, to the south. For instance, and all the southern governors agreed as one. I don't know if that's tenable anymore, that they would not vote for anybody or support any candidate that is not from the south. That is not even voting anymore. Mm. You know, so um, the issue of being fair, um, we'll have to wait and see. But I know that people are definitely not going to be happy. 
But however you do it, there's no way the result comes out that everybody will be happy 100%. Okay. All right. Let's leave that discussion. But also know, okay. also know that uh, usually, although the, the prize possession is a presidency, mm. but as soon as that is obtained, then the balance of power now continues down the line. You know, you begin to zone, and you must of necessity do that, as has been the practice, where the VP is going to come from, and when the presidency is cast, as they say then you now begin to look at where the uh, Senate president will come from, the deputy Senate president, okay. you know, the you know the uh, speaker of the House, okay. the deputy speaker. So it goes down the line like that. So um, it may just be the second to government and all of that. So it may just be that, okay, you don't have the ultimate price, but eventually then there becomes a spread. There has to be a spread, you know, of the other positions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Victor. Let's go to the next uh, the, the next topic. That's about insecurity. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you're aware when the Abuja Kaduna Trail bound uh, track was uh, bombed and uh, 68 people were kidnapped by terrorists and uh, there's been a loud call for the security agencies and the administration to respond swiftly to rescuing these persons. There's a report yeah. on the front pages of newspapers that uh, there might be a trade between the hostages and some of the terrorists that the government has uh, you know, captured earlier before now. Do you see that materializing? See, uh, there's nothing that is predictable in this country. As soon as they were arrested, well, immediately a value was put on the on the on the on the on the kid on the victims. On the victims. You know what happened with the issue of the uh, Chibok girls and then the other ones in uh, is it Dapchi or so? Yes. You know, uh, the, the, the bank MD immediately, you know, yes. uh, was uh, rescued with the uh, ransom was paid allegedly of about 100 million. Yes. And it came out. So the others that don't have a value, quote unquote, obviously not in front of God because they are all equal, yeah. uh, have been left to their fate. And this should not be the case. Government is father to everybody. If they had done. And I cannot, we cannot pretend that I don't know who paid. Uh, let me not begin to say what I don't know here. But um, we cannot pretend that government has not uh, paid for some people in the past. I don't have proof, but it is not impossible. Uh, I would have thought that if we were negotiating for one, we should have negotiated for everybody. You know, so uh, the MV is out now. The rest are then left to their feet, unfortunately. Now the terrorists have tried to see if they can get as much money they can. So what they are doing now is simply, you know, they have, that's what you call the bargaining chip. Okay. The people that they have now, they can negotiate because the pressure is piling on government by uh, civil society, by the media, by the families of these people, you know, for them to be released. And so these people are also very smart negotiators. Mm. I've seen we need an opportunity for them to either make money or get their their colleagues free. Okay. Um, and so that's what they're cashing on. And um, it's tough. I, I just hope that wisdom prevails okay. at the end of the day and that the needful is done to bring our people home safely. All right. And that's uh, yeah. Victor Ohai, a presidential hopeful on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. Very thanks for joining us this morning on the review. Thank you very much.